where there is three different ways to contribute. One is with your time, one is with your money, one is with your voice. If you have a platform, talk about it. If you got time, give your time to somebody. If you got the money, make the right investments into companies that want to do something about this, and that's what Elon Musk is doing. Elon just spent $100 million. I want you to think about this. He put $100 million into a new uni uh, university. Elon wants to open up a new university in Texas. This is according to the story, uh, The Verge. So Elon Musk plans to establish a university in Austin, Texas with a $100 million contribution from his charity, the foundation. Time is that? The university will focus on STEM education Nine. and offer instruction in subjects like math, science, engineering, and physics. It aims to provide hands-on learning experiences and simulations while seeking accreditation from Southern Association of Colleges and Schools Commissions on Colleges. In addition to the university, Musk's plan includes building STEM-focused primary and secondary school, schools that will teach subject beyond STEM. These K-12 through schools will initially enroll around 50 students with the intention of scaling up over time. This is an example of somebody that's making their money and using their money to fight the elites. When you see Elon doing something like this, Tom, for somebody whose daughter, we cannot publicly say it, yes or no. We cannot say it or we can't say it. Don't say the school. Don't say the school. Okay. Tom's daughter had a school she wanted to go to. Yeah. I'll give you where it's at. It's in America. Okay. <laughs> it narrows it down. It narrows it down. It down. Very good. Specific. It's not Oxford. No, it's, it's not, not, Oxford. not Oxford. She got a 1560 out of her uh, 1600. As a parent, Tom, when you hear somebody like Elon Musk, who's got a few hundred million dollars, he's putting a hundred million dollars into schools. What does that make you think about? Because if he's the pace setter, maybe other people are going to say, I want to start my, my own school as well. What does this make you think about? Well, this, this makes me think about, and I, I've had this discussion with my daughter and my wife, and I said, I think you're the last generation that goes, at least from our family, into a traditional education institution as we know the structure today. I don't think my grandkids would do this. I think that you have people like Elon Musk, like you and me, that feel passionate about education, that are going to build a next generation, a next level of education in America. And what I think about, I really think this is the, the last generation, at least I'm going to be involved with, that, that goes to these traditional colleges in a traditional way. And, and by the way, it's really sketchy right now, you know, but she's got a very specific major. She wants to go follow that, but that's what I think about. I got a question And for I you. love what he's doing. I love what he's doing. I want to support him. Let's be creative. Let's be creative, and let's get some <laughs> ideas here. Okay. Let's just say we have an unlimited checkbook. We can use some of our resources to start a school. What would you build as a school to be unique and different than other schools out there? How would you build a school? What would you do in your school? This goes to everybody here. Tom, I, I'll start off with you. I, I'd go right back to the tradition of debate. Because debate has become, you know, just loud argument. There was a tradition of debate where you had an elegant way, and there was rules of debate, to come bring in a point, have a counterpoint, a rebuttal, and then a review by your peers at the conclusion of that debate, called the discussion of your, of your classmates or a discussion by a panel. I would bring back debate of both sides, bringing both sides in, so people could see the logic and the true winner rather than being told who the winner is. Vinny, what would you I, do? I'm curious. I mean, I remember what Pledge Allegiance. They took, did they take that out of school too? Probably. Just something in the beginning where you where you shout out your country and you you basically get everybody on the same team. And they stopped doing all that. Charlie, you got a school. We're, whatever we want to call the school, we can call it. What would you have in your school that would be different than other schools? Yeah, first, I think Hillsdale does a great job, uh, and I think Hillsdale is America's greatest college, and they're a sponsor here, and I, I love them. Hillsdale.edu, they're amazing. Actually, the website is charlieforhillsdale.com if you really want to check it out. But um, I would make it different. I, I, would, I would combine mind, body, soul. Um, if you, the theoretical school is you have to be physically fit. Uh, you have to have a certain BMI. You have to commit to a spiritual life, and you also have to develop your mind, and I would do it in a classical way. Uh, the whole center of higher education should be that there is a truth and let's figure out what that is the reason the woke stuff has started is they start from a tr truth claim saying there is no truth as soon as you acknowledge there's an objective of truth of the universe it destroys all woke i hope everyone understands that how do you beat the woke as soon as you get people to acknowledge that there are natural laws of the universe that transcend your existence and some things are objectively true it just it absolutely obliter obliterates the woke so as higher education has dismissed that the woke has been ascendant. So that's what I would do. Adam, let's, by the way, how many guys want to hear what Adam has to say yeah. about the school? Anybody wants to hear Adam's thoughts here? <laughs> what would you do with your school? So I have a feeling yeah. what? if Adam started a school, 90-10 yeah. ratio, I believe, yeah. 
One hundred percent. Would you not? One hundred percent. It'd be have, like a nightclub in Miami. Ninety percent women, ten yeah. percent guys. It's gonna be the best college of all time. Right. It, it, but with that being said, number rule, number one, rule number one. No dudes are allowed to play sports with the females. I like that. Straight up. I like that. Okay? Like, just not happening Very in my school. Very unique idea. This is Wait, like, man, that's... I understand so, so that. You're saying if Leah and Thomas we will do show. like we did back in the day in, in Little League. Cup check. Let's see what's Got going you. on here. Got you. Number two. When we started the podcast in 2020, I think the number was like 11 to 1 liberal teachers. Yep. Versus conservative teachers. That's right. 11 to 1. Can we just get that back to an equilibrium situation where there's an equal amount, like you talked about, debate, conservatives, liberals, talk to each other, because what's going on with the smartest, useful idiots in the world at Harvard, MIT, yeah. Penn, we're seeing what's going on there. These the kids ten? are geniuses, but they're being fed a ball of crap from these teachers. Because how many kids in college are actually gonna stand up and confront their teacher on maybe some ideology that they perceive as wrong? They're gonna shut the F up, and follow along and then just go along that path. So I think it's problematic that there's so many teachers that are just basically indoctrinating kids. There's no more education, it's just indoctrination in school. Now back in Florida State, when I was there playing ball and having fun, we didn't really have to get into all this uh, woke situation. They go to class at Florida State? No, <laughs> but Charlie, that's how you end up on a yeah. podcast with PBD. And Pat, Pat, I think, especially in the younger age, like, you know, what, what, what do cops I walk didn't around? Know that. What about Arizona State, guy? What are you talking about? I didn't go to college. He didn't even go to college, <laughs> yeah. We're here. In Arizona. Don't go to college. It's Pat, a scam, everybody. Pat, college <laughs> is a scam. You the, should write the, a book The university about it. system is broken. Hey, the that, college I debt is ridiculous. That looks like a good book. It's called The College Scam. The College Scam. You did write a book about it. Pat, what do cops wear on their on their the Cameras, the, the, the body cam. The body cam. Yeah. Oh, kids up to a certain age, like when they're young, I want body cam. All the they kids. have cell phones. That's no, 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 no. I want a cam. Yeah. Like you, you as a parent, to see what the hell they're teaching yeah. the kids. I totally agree. Have a have a camera go like a GoPro yes. on your kid. I want to hear if I want to tap in during the day and see what the hell you're teaching my kid. Here, I want to be able to come here, in and here, watch. Here's the best argument: you drop your dog off for doggy daycare, and you can log into an app to yeah, see yeah. if your golden retriever is being pampered. It's getting abused. Mm -hmm. When you drop your kid off to a public school, you have a moral right to find out what that Th teacher is teaching. Thank you. True. And Charlie, this even is... if it's one camera in the classroom, if like you're a dad, you want to sign up for me? Yeah. Know, if you're true. a dad in your home, Adam, I want to be able to just go. Okay, what are they doing? If you go in there and everybody's wearing rainbow shit and dancing around. I'm coming to the school. You know what I mean, Tom? Claire. What the hell's going on? Maybe you want me to put this out? There you go. <laughs> Phoenix. Oh. Welcome to the West, PB. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, how's this look? That's the first yes. Middle Eastern yeah, cowboy I ever. I love it. <laughs> yes. Hey, we put the college uh, scam written by Charlie Kirk here. You got your book out of ground. So, so PBD, I want to hear your answer to this question. How would you You're not transform the college system here? <laughs> No. Sign it. Sign it. Sign it? But your hair still is good. Oh, ask the question. No, yeah, because we've had this conversation before, but I think with Charlie here, and obviously in the light of this book, what would you do? Because you have four kids. Some may go to college. Some, some might go on a sports scholarship. You've thought about this. I'm going to do one thing that's going to be slightly different. Here's what I'm doing. If you go to my school, if your kids are going to my school, I need your involvement, the parents' involvement, period. Okay. If the parent is not involved, your kids can't go to my school that's because right. I'm going to need your help. If we're going to spend time challenging your kids, pushing them, driving them, you have a certain responsibility every month for you to come to school. What do you mean the by kid this? The parents need to come the to school? The parents are coming. Like Rodney Dangerfield and back to school? No, that's not what I'm talking oh, about. Okay. I'm talking about the, you're this coming to school. This is a model school. that works in the inner city the, on your, the charter schools. You're does. coming to school because we're going to also like, work on you becoming weekly, a better parent. Weekly meetings. Really? Because right. we're going to become collectively with the team. Yeah. So we'll update you. Hey, let me tell you what's going on. Here's what happened this week. This is what we're working on. These are the things that we want to talk about, what parents are working. Hey, Johnny, can you tell us what you're doing with your kids, that your two kids that go to our school, they have straight A's. What are you doing? Mary, can you share with us what you're doing with your kids, that they've got straight A's as well? And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, shit, you guys do that? Yeah, that's a great idea. I'm going to use other parents that are raising their kids well to develop other parents that are also holding their kids accountable. Mm -hmm. This idea about let me send my kids somewhere, you do your thing with the kids, it's parents' responsibility. So we would put a bit of the onus also on the parents. The focus will be leadership development. The way he had it, I love the idea. But uh, can I can I add one more thing that I think is it would be right up your alley? What's that? I think kids need to understand that their major has an ROI attached to it, and I think they need to eliminate whatever majors have no like. Kids are going into 
fifty, a hundred thousand, a quarter Gender million studies. dollars Gender of studies. debt before they're even made a dollar in their life. And it turns out that basket weaving or underwater sewing yeah, but I'm gonna tell you does something. not make money. You know, it's crazy though. Here's here's one thing we're not even thinking about. Like, look at all the industries that are about that have disrupted in the past before. Okay, look what this is. Okay, no, I, I never went to Columbia University to be a you know podcast or a journalist. We're here doing a podcast. People watch this. Millions of people give yep. their opinions, thoughts. Do you know some of these guys that are used to reading a teleprompter right there? Yes, next today at <laughs> eight o'clock, John Judge from the and you're just kind of reading it. Yeah. The disruption did this to mainstream media, yep. newspapers, internet, Twitter, social. I believe the next 10, 20, 30 years, one of the se se agree. one of the industries that's gonna be disrupted in ways we don't even know ourselves is gonna be education and it's gonna be so painful. By the way, we saw what happened with MIT. We saw what happened some, with Penn. We saw what happened with uh, Harvard. Oh, Harvard. They didn't uh, fire the uh, president. They can't. Gay, right? They can't fire We're not going to be doing that. They yeah. redefined plagiarism yesterday in their bylaws. By the way, you know what I love? I love that they did that. You know why? <laughs> if you're a parent and you're still thinking Harvard's the pinnacle of school to go to, you are a fool. This is yep. not the same Harvard of 20, 30, 40 years ago. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.